Now, before we read verse 24, so that we get a little background on some things that had transpired almost immediately before this event, we're going to read from verse 1 to 3, then we will jump to verse 24. Are we there? Just raise your hands if you are there. Very good. Let's go. The word of the Lord according to Mark 7, verse 1 to 3, and then from 24 to 30. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Let's read that again. When they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Now let's go to verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, tell two people, there was a certain woman. I'm not hearing you. There was a certain woman in Tyre and Sidon, hallelujah, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. She heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, hmm, go your way. The devil is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. This is the holy word of the Lord. Please take your seats briefly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say, speak, Lord. Speak. Open up our ears. So we might hear you. Open up our eyes. So we might see you. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak. Speak to our spirits, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, the Bible says that Jesus was in a certain town when he was teaching his disciples. And it so happened that after he taught them and was satisfied with his teachings, he entered a certain town. This territory was known as Tyre and Sidon. It could have been a combination of two towns, a twin town, I guess, Tyre and Sidon. Someone say Tyre and Sidon. For the most part, this was a Gentile region. Understand this. When you talk about towns and territories that were mainly occupied by the Jews, you're talking about places like Galilee, places like Cana, places like, oh, glory to God, Jerusalem, of course, Nazareth, etc. But when you go into towns such as Tyre and Sidon, you would have gone out of those territories that were predominantly occupied by Jews and were now in the areas of Gentiles. Are you following me? Somebody say Gentiles. 
Hallelujah. So Jesus was doing what was uncommon in those days because you do not have rabbis leaving Jewish spaces and atmospheres to go into non-Jewish towns. You just don't do that, okay? Now here comes this fellow, so to speak, in their eyes because they had not gotten the revelation that this was the Lord Jesus. And this man was doing everything that was untoward what was written in the book. He was teaching in a manner that was not according to their standards. Now, these were not laws and precepts that were given in the word of God. These were some man-made rules and regulations which today are still in the churches. Oftentimes, people will say things to you and you would think it's Bible doctrine, but it's not. It's man that has made up all these rules, for instance. There are some people who might say to you, if you're going to take the Holy Communion and sure that you're wearing white that's not in scripture there is no such thing oh ensure that you don't go to another church and and listen to the word and hear anything there don't visit another church because you'll pick up spirits that's a lie from the pit of hell unless it is a devil's church now people have all these ways of manipulating God's people they've come up with all these lies that's why the Lord Jesus wants you to search the scripture for yourself because there are many things that are being taught on the pulpit that are not scriptural. Man has come up with all these little things in the name of God to get you under their control. Okay? So you need to know the word for yourself. So here comes the religious hierarchy of the day. Comprising the scribes and the Pharisees especially. Now, the Bible says according to verse 1, 2, and 3, that there was a little bit of confrontation. What happened? They saw that the disciples of Jesus were not sure at what point this visit to Tyre and Sidon had occurred during Jesus' ministry. So we, we don't know if it happened at the time when he had some 72 disciples or 120 disciples or when he had cut down to just 12. So when the Bible says his disciples were with him, don't just think there were only those 12 who were named. There is a possibility that at the time when he visited this territory, the number of disciples had far exceeded that number because, of course, in every ministry, sometimes there is a, a reduction that occurs after a while. People will leave for different reasons. God will sever people for different reasons. So we are not sure how many disciples were with Jesus at the time. Now, the Bible says that the scribes and Pharisees had made an observation because that's all religious people do. Religious people don't have anything to bring to the table spiritually. Religious people are so caught up in their own rules and regulations. Religious people is so caught up in appearance. Religious people put all the weight and stress on the things that do not carry us to eternal life and will never do so. So they're always going to put emphasis on things that are not relevant in the sight of God. So here comes the religious people. I don't know how they found time to see these things, but I want you to understand when you come up against religious people, they're always going to see the minor things. And you see the major things that they themselves need to see, they will never see. That's why the Lord Jesus says, you want to talk about somebody? Please go pick out the big plank that's in your eye so you can see clearly the beam that is in somebody else's. <laughs> Religious people. Jesus was going around and was ministering the word of God and he was bringing healing and deliverance into the lives of many. Here they are observing him, watching his every move. And whenever he did something that they deemed as controversial, of course, they were never going to sit quietly. They were going to go to him and confront him. 
So Jesus faced a lot of confrontations from religious people. So when you see a child of God being confronted by religious people today, do not think that it is strange. It's not strange. This has been happening from Jesus' days. And if Jesus is our master and he faced it, how much more will we as his servants face these things? So they said unto Jesus, we've been watching and we've been noticing that your disciples have been eating food with dirty hands. They came up with this doctrine that you're not supposed to handle food except you wash your hands. Now the Bible says they were so strict on carrying out this rule of theirs that they themselves would wash their hands many times for the day because they would not touch any food at all unless their hands were so-called clean. Amen? You know what is strange? As a biology student, one of the things I was taught, and especially a few years ago when I, I did a test for the food handler's permit back home, I learned that bacteria multiplies, I believe, every 30 minutes or every 30 seconds. But in either case, I doubt these people had time. In fact, I doubt they had such easy access to water that they would have been able to wash their hands every 30 minutes. Are you getting me? So at some point, I'm sure they would have put food in their mouth. Look at the hypocrisy. They would have put food in their mouths with germs on their hands. Are you hearing me? No matter how much we claim we're wash washing our hands and we're sanitizing, etc., we sweat. Perspiration will attract all manner of germs and dirt in our hands, and sometimes we're just not around water. Isn't that so? So look at the hypocrisy. Because they've come up with that rule, here they go now, watching Jesus, carefully looking to see if he's going to break the rule. And there they go. They see the disciples putting dirty hands in their mouths. The Lord Jesus said unto them, it's not what enters a man that defiles him. Because they were of the belief that unclean spirits, listen to this belief now. They believed that unclean spirits can enter somebody's food. So, if your hands were dirty, okay, they believe that this uncleanness of your hands could be a way of allowing demonic spirits to enter. So by you touching the unclean food, the demon is going to be involved. And when you eat that food and swallow, the demon is going to go inside of you. Where did they get this doctrine from? From whence came this thing? That if you eat food with dirty fingers or dirty hands, demonic spirits will go into you. Huh? And this is what religious people will oftentimes do. They'll scare you with things that are not scriptural. Some of us, we were raised in homes with our grandparents and we were told all manner of things. Do not sweep your house at night. Do not scrape up the dirt at night, put it in the corner. When the baby is born, ensure that you use a red ribbon to tie around the baby's, the baby's wrist. Please ensure that you put a matchstick in the baby's head when the baby has a hiccup. And if demons come into your house, get some lime and some salt and sprinkle. And if you're having issues sleeping, go to Psalm 35 and open the Bible on Psalm 35. Put the tape measure over your door. Are you hearing me? If you sin, you need to baptize again. How about that? Can we get into some deep examples? If you've sinned, you cannot sit at the front. 
If you've committed any kind of sin before God, you got to take your seat at the back. And if you were baptized in an apostolic church, now that you're with the Pentecostal faith, you got to baptize again. From whence came these doctrines? Show me in scripture where a second baptism is required. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So many people lie daily. Don't we tell lies sometimes? Don't we speak all manner of things sometimes? Sometimes your children get on top of your nerves and you, you tell them all manner of things. You sin your soul. Sometimes you swear, I don't want to sin my soul in this house, don't it? So let me ask you a question. Because sin is sin. So every time you sin your soul, so to speak, because of what you say to your husband or your wife or your child, are you going to get a water baptism? Huh? Answer me. Because if we're saying that a water baptism is needed every time we, we commit sin or, or we back, backslide, then, then we all have to be baptizing every single day. Christians involved in scamming. Christians living proud lives. You know, the greatest sin that we could ever commit before God is not even adultery. It's not even idolatry or fornication. You know what the greatest sin is before God? Anybody has a clue? Huh? I'm hearing two different things. Somebody says lies. Okay, raise your hands if you think it's lies. Okay, somebody says pride. Okay, raise your hands if you think it's pride. Pride, proud. The greatest sin you can commit before God. This is the sin that he hates the most. It's like a stench. If you project this before God, I'm telling you, you might not get time enough to receive of his mercy because it upsets him so much. The number one sin that God hates more than anything else is pride. He hates it. That's why Lucifer could not stay there. Lucifer saw the living God being glorified. How the angels would bow down before him. And because he was so glorious and still is, those angels who were directly before him were radiating the glory that was before them. Lucifer was a part of the worship team. Lucifer saw how much honor was being given, how much praise. One day Lucifer said into his heart, no, you know what? I want to be like God. I want to ascend up in to the skies and I want to ascend upon his throne I want to take his place the Lord said ah, 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 ah. I ain't sharing my glory with anyone you can't stay here because you have allowed covetousness to come into your heart Lucifer had to go because Lucifer wanted to take the place of God and God ain't going to allow any competition in his presence he created Lucifer to be glorified by him, not to be replaced by him. Pride. The Lord Jesus said unto his disciples, I saw Lucifer fall out of heaven like lightning. It was so fast. Are you hearing me? When people are proud, sometimes when I see them, I'm just so sorry for them. Don't be too proud. Don't talk about yourself. Don't lift up yourself. Go telling people you are this, you are that. And I listen to people. Hear how they speak. 
pay keen attention to their eyes and my's and me. When you hear too much of it, you're talking to a very proud person. When people love to talk about their accolades, their achievements, what they do or what they used to do. When people love to big themselves up to make themselves look good like they're somebody important. If you're important, you don't need to tell people that you are. The moment they see you and the moment you enter their space, whether a physical or virtual space, people will know who you are. And you don't need to demand people's respect, attention, or honor. If you're really important, those things will come to you. They will follow you. Every time a proud person opens his mouth before God, he's releasing stench. Stench, stench, stench. And more and more stench. And Jehovah is like this. Just inhaling the stench. And one day he's just going to get so tired of the stench that he will just cut down. Sometimes the cut down happens so drastically that there is no time for repentance. Say after me, Father, if there be any pride in me, take it out. Forgive me of pride. I repent of any pride that is found in my heart and in my life. Father, I don't want it anymore. I reject pride. I refuse pride. I divorce pride right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So, these disciples believed that if you eat dirty food or food with dirty hands, you ingest demons. Okay? So, they were like, how could you allow this thing? Because whenever they saw the power of God... And ever, whenever they saw the living word of God, they were always troubled. You see, religious people will read the thing every day. They'll recite it. Nobody knows scriptures like religious people. Have you ever come across those people who love telling you how much they know scripture more than you? You know the scripture, but where's the power behind the scripture that you know? Huh? Don't boast in the scripture because truth be told, when devils come your way, you don't even know which ones to draw for. So if you don't know how to apply the scriptures, how does it profit you to know 100 scriptures off the top of your head? They said, how come they're doing these things because we don't, we don't believe this. So the Lord Jesus had to say to them, it's not the food that enters a person that defiles them. Because you know, truth be told, our bodies are set up in such a way that if you eat something poisonous or something that does not belong in the body, I don't know about your body, but I can tell you about mine, I'm going to vomit it out. The Lord has so constructed my body that if I drink something now and there's something in it, I'm not going to be still until he allows it to come out. Okay? The body has a way of flushing itself, cleansing itself. So the Lord is saying, if the body does that, then there's no way you can really defile inside with food. Because the various systems, when they work together, they know what to get rid of. So don't be so concerned about what you eat. Be concerned about what comes out of your mouth. Because it is what comes out of your mouth, which is a true reflection of what is being processed in your heart, that actually defiles you. Evil is what comes out of many people's mouths. And the reason people can speak so evilously is because it's evil that they have in their hearts. 
I've oftentimes said to people, listen carefully to people when they talk to you and how they so-called crack their jokes because a lot of the things that come out in their moments of giving a joke are actually what they really mean and how they really feel about you. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And out of the heart floweth the issues of life. Oh, your face is big. Your lips are big. <laughs> it's a joke. No, it's not a joke. That's actually how you feel about me. Oh, you're illiterate. But you can't speak. No, it's a joke. It's not a joke. This is actually how you see me. Are you understanding? So the Lord says, it's out of the mouth and what comes out of your heart that you get defilement. Hallelujah. So Jesus has just delivered that little sermon. Here he goes into a new town and the Bible says something very profound. The word of God says, that when Jesus had gotten into Tyre and Sidon, let's read verse 25. There was a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. The Bible says that the woman heard of him. Someone say, the woman heard of him. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, the woman heard of Jesus. Now, something that we need to think about is this. Many things were being said about Jesus then. Remember, they already have him as a blasphemer. That he's someone who is purporting as God. But he's not God in their eyes. So he's blaspheming. They already have him as the carpenter's son. Isn't this Joseph's son? Mary and Joseph's son with whom we grew this village boy, who is he? Why is he even speaking to us like that? Who are you? A lot of things were being said. In addition, some were saying that this casting out of demon thing is being done under the power of Baal Zebub, the god of the flies. And who knows, maybe there were times when they said the god of Baal. Baal did it. Because they have gods for everything. Gods for rain, gods for sun, gods for everything. They attributed the power that was being demonstrated through our Lord Jesus to some kind of deity other than God. So a lot of things were being said. He's a false prophet. Who is he? He's no Messiah. We're looking for the Messiah. This is not the Messiah. Who this? Who is this person exalting himself, going around talking like he's someone of authority? Plus, what he's teaching is not according to what we teach. He teaches some unlawful things. He's there teaching on the Sabbath. You're not even supposed to lift a straw on the Sabbath. He's breaking our rules. Who is this person? Understand this, that when the word of God says that he went into Tyre and Sidon, and there was a Syrophoenician woman there. The woman heard about him. My question is, what exactly did she hear? Because when it came to Jesus in those days, as I said, many things were being said. Now, when it comes to your healing, your breakthrough, your miracle, your deliverance, understand that the potential to experience these things will be surrounded by many talks. You'll hear a lot of sayings. Now the question is going to be, what exactly do you believe from all that you hear? What are you going to believe? This woman's faith was really being put to the test. This was a woman who lived in a territory in which there were no rabbis teaching the laws of Moses. She lived in a Gentile town. 
Gentiles did not have the privilege of getting the word dissected and rightly divided in their midst. If this thing was lacking within the Jewish community where the word was given originally, can you imagine how scarce this was in a Gentile community? Now, so because they did not have the word, so to speak, She's now having to go off what she has. I'm not hearing you. The Bible says she heard of him. One thing I know. Solomon says there is nothing new under the sun. Is that so? And one thing I know about today is this. Bad news usually gets circulated way faster than good news, don't it? So common sense tells us that we are sure that this woman would have heard all manner of things concerning Jesus. It could not have been just the good things she was hearing. Because the Pharisees... The Sadducees, the scribes, the publicans, the Herodians, the various religious sects at the time were ensuring that they were spreading all kinds of negative words and sentiments about Jesus because their plan was to eliminate him, silence him, and shut him down. So I know that when word about Jesus got into the territory of Sidon and Tyre, that word of all these lies were also heard. Now, you have a sick daughter at home. One who is possessed with an unclean spirit. The Bible says, when we read verse 30, it says, And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. You know why? Because by virtue of being possessed with this unclean spirit, this young girl had not known rest in a long while. So this mother has a daughter at home who's probably always up, always wanting attention. I don't know if you've ever been around someone who's demon possessed, but it's like they've lost their minds. They're not themselves. So they'll be putting the hot pot in the fridge. They'll be doing some stupid things. They'll be putting the tomato in their drawers. They'll pull out their drawers and be using the drawers as though it's a toilet. They'll do all manner of things. Now this woman would have gotten no rest. Because if the child has no rest, she can't have any rest either. So the devil is tormenting not one, but two people. One directly and the other indirectly. That's why I don't understand how people will have husbands or children in their homes who are sick and demon possessed and you sit there and do nothing. Because first of all, you know. That every night you have to get up three, four times in order to attend to this person who is possessed. And you sit there not making any effort to get your child out to be delivered. By the time you ought to go to work, your eyes are red. You lack sleep. You have to be taking antidepressants. You're stressed. And you sit in a congregation in which the presence of the Lord is. And you don't even say, Lord, help me. You keep your mouth shut. You're not the one with the cancer, but sure enough, you're spending excessive amount of time attending to the one with the cancer. It's almost like you are the one who has it and your mouth is shut. You're the one having to spend at the doctors. You're the one having to schedule these appointments, book an Uber each time, or call a family member, which is most times very inconvenient, and you are not frustrated enough to come into the house of God totally open, totally broken, totally desperate before him for your healing. Somebody has to pump you up to say thank you, Jesus. Somebody has to touch you to say, Jesus. The 
this woman had a desperate situation at home. And by this time, she has heard a lot of things. Which of the things does, <laughs> does she believe? Because what she believes is about to determine whether or not her situation will change. Are you going to believe that this is really not the Messiah, madam? Are you going to believe that this is some prophet exalting himself? He's false, he's fake. What are you going to believe? Because it's only your faith that's going to make you whole. The Lord will send you amongst his servants in whom is his spirit and power. What are you going to believe? It's just another fake prophet now, a fake prophetess. <laughs> Who is this? What kind of spirit she uses? I've heard talks like this, that there are some religious folks who say, Oh, I've never seen that. She, that that's not the spirit of God. <laughs> They're so far from the Lord that not even discernment they have been given as a gift. They're so caught up preaching people's business that they are missing what's in the word. And if they don't preach word, there is no power. They'll go on their pulpits and they'll preach somebody's life. Some will call people's names on their pulpits because they don't have a message. Some will hear that Sister Julie has gotten pregnant and that will be their message on the pulpit. Is that the work to which we have been called? Which Jesus commissioned such individual? That's not Jesus. That's not a disciple of his. Are you hearing me? So when it comes on to us receiving our healing, we're going to hear many things. What are we going to believe though? What are we going to believe? How much of what we hear are we going to allow to infiltrate our spirits? Are we going to keep some things out? Because some people are very confused. They're confused because some say this and some say that. But what do you say? What does your spirit say? What do you feel when you hear the word? What do you feel and experience when you come into the house of God? Are you seeing any clearer now when it comes on to the things of this life? Do you understand the scripture any better now? Because it has been rightly divided so that even a child can understand it. So you will hear many things. But what has your experience been? See, religious folks, many of them, the Lord has already determined where their end will be. They will never change many of them. They're going straight to hell. They'll not change many of them. Their pride will take them there. Their self-righteousness will take them there, many of them. Their lies will take them there. Their deceptions will take them there. Their witchcraft will take them there. Their manipulation will take them there. Many of these people, they have no intention of repenting. What exactly will you believe as it pertains to the capabilities of Jesus? You've heard how he has healed someone who had a short hand or arm. And he extended the arm, bringing it to its original length. Do you believe that? 
Or are you going to quickly run with the opposite story, which is, oh, that was magic. There's a woman, her name is Catherine, from the country of St. Lucia, who called the ministry with a piece of foot. I want to hear a different sound, like hallelujah, quietly. Catherine called. I had not known her name at the time when she called. In fact, before I got the chance to speak with this lady, because I have a number that is out there available to the public, a WhatsApp number, I just know that one day I was scrolling through my phone and I saw what I deemed as some disturbing photos. Now, it was not unusual for me to see disturbing photographs. I've looked at people's vomit. I've seen all kinds of stuff, women's menses. I've seen all these things. But you see the day when I saw the picture of this woman's foot? I never knew in all my life that such a thing existed. Hold on, let me say this to you. Let me see those of you who are from Jamaica originally. You have some affiliation with Jamaica. Okay. Now, you can tell me if you've seen this in Guyana and wherever else you are from, but watch this. In Jamaica, you'll oftentimes see individuals on the streets who are walking with what you call a big foot. In the medical field, they refer to this condition as elephantitis. So a woman or a man might be walking on the street and one of her legs is normal in terms of size but the other is big, it's keeping them back, they're limping. Have you ever seen that? Raise your hands if you've seen this condition. Now, the closest thing I've ever seen to what happens under the bandages, because see, most times when I see these individuals in the streets, in the marketplaces, can I tell you, I've especially seen it in the markets, that's something I need to talk to the Lord about. Why is it that they're so frequent in market areas? Could this demonic spirit be something that is invoked and used by people who are vendors in the markets? I will address you with this one day when I get the chance, prayerfully, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, so they usually hide what's there. So sometimes, because the bandages are not wrapped properly, you might get a glance of the darkening of the skin color that's already taking place. So sometimes the area just looks dark. Sometimes you might get a peek and see a sore, right? So I remember that maybe about three or four years ago, I had visited the Kingston Public Hospital to look for someone. And it so happened that the person who was immediately beside that person was undergoing surgery or had gone through surgery. But they had drawn the curtains. But listen, it looks like they had not drawn the curtains properly or maybe the curtains were just short because you know how this system goes in Jamaica, right? Something, if it's not one thing, listen. Whatever reason, I don't know if this was the devil or what, but by the time I had gotten on that floor and was now about to reach the bed, I, the curtain, I don't know if it's the nurse back shifted the curtain, something, I see the foot, oh my God, I near, I, listen, for the whole time I just kept seeing the foot. They had done such a surgery where they used whatever technology or device, and they've cut away all the flesh that would have caused it to look inflamed and big. So now, after surgery, just imagine, just you just imagine, you're looking at blood, you're looking at meat, 
It was something I had never seen before. But doctors don't understand this. Physical instruments and procedures cannot resolve spiritual matters. Medical procedures cannot treat spiritual issues. So I want to believe that that person, I'm sure, was left in much pain. But if the spiritual thing was not addressed, I'm almost sure that that foot is already starting to grow back. Because these things are spiritual things. They must be addressed in the root spiritually in order for the individual to be delivered. So that was the closest thing that I saw to what I describe as being disturbing. When I saw Catherine's foot, I saw what looked like a carcass. I did show you the pictures. I nearly screamed. I did not know that there were people who had these kinds of infirmities. There are people who are walking around you every day who don't even have breasts. You don't even know this. That's why you need to stop looking at people and dishonoring them and giving them all these bad looks. You don't know what people are going through and what they're suffering with. The woman might look good in her clothes, but you don't even know it's some scandal bag she put in the place of her breast because she has done hysterectomy and all these things, vasectomy, everything. A woman is passing you by and you don't even know she doesn't even have ovaries. A woman is sitting next to you and she, she has no chance of getting pregnant again. And we there trying to form a perception of people based on how they look. Are, are we crazy? Some people might see some women wearing wigs all the time. And you have all kinds of things to say about that woman on social media. Do you even know her condition? Do you know what's happening under the wig? How do you know that there's not a bald head under the wig and the woman is struggling to have her hair regrow? You there talking, shut your mouth! Oh, she says she's a Christian and she'll wear all those wigs. God knows her heart. And he knows her insecurity. She don't wear a wig because she likes to. Because truth be told, I've worn a wig before, for instance. And I'm not even comfortable in wig. Can you imagine someone wearing wigs every single day? You think they like wearing the wig? What if they're insecure about the fact that they've lost their hairline? What if they have some sores on their scalp? You don't know. So because you don't know, you shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Anyhow, the Bible says she had a sick child, a child that was demon-possessed. She heard about Jesus. The fact that she was going to go to him means that she has picked sense out of nonsense. And sometimes when it comes to your healing, you're going to have to pick sense out of nonsense. Catherine picked sense out of nonsense when she sent me her foot. Not even I had prayed for anyone with such a condition before that time. As you would have heard from her, she said that what had happened is, of course, she had her whole foot. But it's like... It happened that within a short space of time, the foot got infected. And guess what? In a matter of days, by the time the doctors were supposed to attend to the foot, it's like when they opened the foot, it was almost like a shell. It, it was eaten out. The substance were gone. So she, it's, it's almost like the foot melted in the doctor's hands. Now, there was this shell 
and rotten meat. I did not even know how to pray. I had to literally say on the phone, Father, you lead me in this prayer. And I hear the Lord saying, I've anointed your mouth and I watch over your words. Begin to command that foot to grow back. Command everything, line by line. Itemize the various things and command them to come forth. And I did, by faith. She there. I don't know what she heard, but I'm sure she heard many things. But the things that she chose to believe were the right things. They were the truth, the truthful things. Now you explain how someone who had half a foot gets back a whole foot. How? How? There's a miracle in this room with someone's name on it. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He is a miracle. He's a miracle working God. You don't believe that? What can he not do? You know why many Christians are filling up churches every Sunday and they go home with their infirmities? I'm going to ruffle your feathers now. But for the right reason. You're going to dislike me now, but love me again tomorrow. Because I'm trying to help you. You know what is your problem? You lack faith. And when you lack faith, you can't please our Father. Our Father says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So you there in church saying hallelujah and you're displeasing God. You there in church clapping your hands and you don't know that in the Spirit, you are displeasing Him because you don't believe and have faith in the God you are professing with your mouth. Miracles happen best in an atmosphere of faith. When you come to anything that has Shadeen Anglin's name on it, if you don't come with faith, it makes no sense. We're not going to have anything. I live by faith. I do everything by faith. I'm not an individual that procrastinates. If you want to tell me and, and get something done, I'll do it. I don't drag my feet. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing, to be honest. But I don't linger, especially when it comes to ministry-related things, kingdom things. If God says, I just want to get the green light, I'm starting to work on it. Some of you have come for some things today, and the only way you're going to get it is if you have faith, like this Syrophoenician woman. The Lord Jesus says to her, it is not good for us to give the children's bread to the dogs. In other words, it is not wise for me to give things that were designed originally for Jews to non-Jews. Healing, deliverance, miracles, breakthroughs, and all these things were meant for Jews. The apple of God's eyes. You are of a Gentile nation. You people don't have any covenant with my father. You're, you're like an outsider. Should I give what is designed originally for my father's children, for his beloved to you, an outsider, the woman said to him, but when the children are eating around the table, there are some dogs. Understand that not every dog is the same. There are wild dogs and there are pet dogs. There are mongrel dogs. Pitbull dogs, 
But there are also other dogs, like, name some of them. <laughs> what are some of the others, the little pet ones? Huh? Chi All right. All right. Poodle. Chihuahua. She says, there are some dogs who when the children are eating, they position themselves to catch the crumbs, the things that they didn't get. We, we position ourselves to catch them. We are so desperate that we have aligned ourselves and because we know the value of what you have given to the children, even if it means just getting a blip, just a tiny, minuscule amount, we're, we're going to be very grateful. The Lord Jesus heard these words and his heart was touched. He said, even as you have so humbled yourself, tell two people, Jesus was amazed by the woman's humility. Her humility impressed him. The Lord Jesus says, because of your humility, the unclean spirit has left your daughter. Understand something. Unclean spirits are not only spirits that sometimes come out with a scream or spirits that talk back to Jesus, like the ones who say, I know who you are. You are the son of God. Leave us alone. What do we have to do with you? Some of them don't express themselves in that manner. They're called unclean because of the sinful thing with which they're affiliated. So an unclean spirit can easily be a jealous spirit. An unclean spirit can be a stubborn spirit that is in somebody. An unclean spirit can be a lying spirit for sure. An unclean spirit can be that spirit that makes the woman so bitter all the time. An unclean spirit can mean the spirit that causes a man to masturbate. An unclean spirit can be that spirit that causes someone to be very lef lascivious, lustful. An unclean spirit can be the spirit in someone that makes them feel like they should have what belongs to somebody else. So unclean spirits, this terminology speaks of Anything that is associated with sin. Spirits that have come by means of sin. They don't have to always be obvious and aggressive, so to speak. Some can be there and they're very quiet, you don't know. Like a spirit of depression, that's an unclean spirit sitting in somebody. There are many mothers I've spoken with, and especially of late, they'll tell me that they have a child in the house and the child has not been talking. A woman might say, I have a big son, and for the last three months, he has hardly come out of his room. He has hardly said any words to me. That's an unclean spirit. Can we stand? I believe there is someone in this room who is as desperate as this Sarah Phoenician woman. It might not be you, it might be someone at home who needs to be delivered from something, from an unclean spirit. 
There are some women in this room who might be saying to yourself, why can't I keep a relationship? Every time I get involved with someone, it doesn't work out. Could it be that there is the presence of an unclean spirit that keeps turning these men away from you? I've cast out devils by the grace of God, by his power and might only, not me. Okay? The Lord has used this unworthy vessel to cast out spirits that have admitted that they came into the person's life to wreck their marriage. I remember speaking to a woman one time and the spirit said through her, I came to cause her to have a break off in her relationship. And the spirit said, every time she's with a man, I break them up. I break them up an unclean spirit. Hallelujah. I believe there are some unclean spirits in this room. And as you lift up your faith, the Lord Jesus is going to release his power to cause unclean spirits to go because of your faith. Let me say this. The only way those spirits will leave is if you actually believe. And if you have allowed your hearts to process the right things, the things that are lovely, the things that are pure, the things that are true. Raise your hands. Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Jesus. I don't hear you. for you. Did you find the lumps? Ooh, you, you. Ooh, pull her a little closer. Your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. We're telling God that he's worthy. And I was just incorporating some moments of healing and miracles that are coming to my mind. I started off with Catherine's foot. Then I remembered that just last week, there was a woman in this room who had some lumps in her breast. Okay? And we prayed for the woman. 
Now, while we were praying for the woman, the Lord caused the lumps to not be felt, to disappear. The Lord healed her of the lumps. They said it's cancer. Amen. And before we left, the woman was searching for the lumps. She kept saying that they are supposed to be here. Any of you were here last week? She kept saying they're supposed to. So just now, as I was trying to fetch for some examples, I saw the woman and I just felt like asking her. So I just want her to give me the answer. Come and never really hear her. She was all the way in the corner. Did you find the lumps that you were looking for, miss? No, no. No, but I... no you need to say that no, they're stronger. No. So the Lord healed you? Well, like, it's not there, so I'm... I... So you got a miracle? I think, yes. That's the reason you're not walking, you know. Hold on. That's, you know that's the reason you're not walking, right? That's the reason you're not walking yet. Because of your own doubts. You're the reason you're still in this wheelchair, not Jesus. Did you really come up to say to me that... She said, think. She said, I don't think so. I don't think so. I said, are they there? I don't think. She said, they're not there. Did you receive a miracle? I think so. I think so, miss. The lumps them gone and you still think you got a miracle? You will not walk if you do not believe. You're going to need a greater faith. You're going to have to work on this to walk. God has given you a glance. He has given you an appetizer. The main entree is to come. But unless you truly believe, Miss, did the Lord Jesus give you a miracle? Yes, he did. What did he do for you? Well, I don't feel the lumps. The lumps are, how many lumps were there? Well, there was, there, they go up under my arms, so I, I don't know. I know there's one I could feel here. Right. And then they say they go up, you know, into my like shoulder. So I don't know. I go to the doctor again this week. I'll see. But there's. I can't feel it. No. And they said it, it was cancerous, right? Yes, it is. So you're going to do a cancer test, right? We want to hear back that result. We want the result. So no lumps. Plus we decree and declare no cancer. No lumps. No lumps. No lumps. No cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. She open up your mouth, you deserve the praise. Worthy is Hallelujah. Raise your hands. We're in an hour of healing. You've heard many things about Jesus. The internet continues to slander his name every day. People keep making a big deal. As long as I know the person to whom I'm making reference, that's all that matters. Some say he's off Baphomet. Some say he was the God of the sky. Some say he doesn't exist. Some say there is a most high, but there is no Jesus. Away with this Jesus thing. Some say the apostolic days have come to an end. They ended with Paul, James, John, and the early apostles. Some say a woman can't preach. Some say a woman can't heal. A woman cannot be used by God to deliver. I should have men seated on one side and women on another side. Some say, oh, 
if she's not real, that's not real. Because when the Lord ain't using them to do it, they discredit and undermine the power in someone else. And that's all that it is. Because it ain't happening in you. You feel pressed to not just tell yourself that it, it, it's not happening with someone else. But you must get an audience because the devil loves an audience. So somebody who feels like, oh, because God ain't using me to do this, it can't happen with someone else. They're going to ensure that they tell a whole community. What did you hear? What did you hear? And of all the things you've heard, what exactly do you believe? Raise your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's begin to, from the depths of our hearts, repent. Repent of doubting God. Let's repent of doubt. Some of us, the unclean spirit that is in us is doubt. We love to doubt. The Lord says he's not pleased with some of you in this room. I hear the Lord saying some of you in this room, your sin is you have dishonored his name. And we must repent. The unclean spirit that is in many of us, hallelujah, is unholy comparisons, a tendency to compare ourselves with others. And a tendency to feel like we need to be like others, unclean spirit. For some individuals, the unclean spirit is a spirit of ungratefulness, never thankful, always complaining. Never appreciative of the little things. Always looking for more and more. And even when more is being added, you're still complaining. The unclean spirit in many is procrastination. Always putting off things. Always saying, wait, or I gotta wait. Shadabakata. Raku shebeketa. For some people, the issue is distrust. You've so trained yourself to not trust people that even when trustworthy people come into your midst, you're still struggling. Still struggling. Some of you, the struggle has gone over into your marriage. And because of that, your marriage is falling apart because of you. It's not the other person, it's you. Always bringing up the same thing over and over again. Always whining over the same thing. Never forgiving, never loving. And you expect your marriage to last? How? How? For many individuals, the unclean spirit is a tendency to not forgive people. You do me wrong, I'm going to cut you off forever. There's no way we can talk again, ever. I'll see you in public and I'll pass you like I don't know you. My heart is hard toward you. That is the unclean spirit that is in many. Hallelujah. The unclean spirit in many is a double-minded heart. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unsta instability, rather, is in many. Double-mindedness is in many. This minute, you know what you want. Next minute, you don't. This minute, you want to be baptized. Next minute, you don't. This minute, you feel like you want marriage. Next minute, you don't. This minute, you want to stay. Next minute, you want to go. Double-mindedness. This minute, I want to serve the Lord. Next minute, I, I cannot even bother to go to church. I ain't even going to bother with this God thing. Double-mindedness. This minute, I'm all in. Next minute, I'm all out.
For many, the issue is anger. You're easily angered. Why? Why everything angers you? Why is it that when you talk, you literally not just sound angry, but you release that spirit of anger that makes the person to whom you're speaking afraid of you? That's a spirit right there. That's a spirit right there. You can be around people who are upset, but don't make you feel as intimidated and afraid as some people make you do. Why? Because they carry a spirit of anger and rage. There are some women who are wondering why the man doesn't want to stay. He doesn't want to stay because you're too angry. And whenever you talk to him, he feels afraid. Why will a man be with a woman who does not make him feel safe? The spirit that many women are dealing with is a lying spirit from men. It's always lies and lies covering up lies. Unclean spirit. Lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. But they that dwell truly are his delight. Hallelujah. Open your mouths right now and begin to repent. In the name of Jesus. Speak to the Lord. Ask him to forgive you and cleanse you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tell him, Lord, if there be any unclean spirit in me, remove it. Deliver me, Lord. Empty me. Cleanse me. Come on, speak to him. As he brings to your memory the things that are in you, the habits that you have, the tendencies that you have. Some of you are stiff-necked, hard-headed. You don't listen. Some of you, the issue you're struggling with is pride. You're too proud. Full of yourself. And in order for God to do what he needs to do in your life, you need to get yourself out of the way and out of the picture. There's too much of you going on. Some of you need to be delivered from you. Hallelujah. As he brings those things to your heart, admit to him that they are there according to the word. If ye confess your sins. Yes. He's faithful and just. To forgive you of your sins. And to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So the Lord has been delivering this man. Every time he comes. Hallelujah. He's cleansing him. Ensure that he has. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Repent. 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 Come on. Repent. Repent. Tell him what is there. Tell him the tendencies that are there in the name of Jesus. Tell him. Tell him right now. Tell him. Tell him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I subdue every spirit of depression that is in this room right now. Depression. I subdue you now in the name of Jesus. Be subdued now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I subdue by the power of Jesus Christ and I call out right now. Open your eyes and look at me for a moment. Because some people are going to be delivered right now. Look at me. 
look at me. See Jesus, but I want your eyes to be open because I want to make eye contact with you. Who said that you can't? Who said that you are anything but what God says you are? Who says they know your potential? Are they God? Who? Who says you cannot do? Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I call out every spirit of fear in this room. Manifest now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Every power of fear begin to manifest right now. Fear. Right now. Manifest now. In the name of Jesus. Fear. We call you out now. You unclean spirit that has been tormenting God's people. The word of God says fear is torment. Spirit of torment manifest now. In the name of Jesus. Loose God's people right now. We subdue fear in the name of Jesus. Fear to try. Fear to drive. Shakayadaba satanana masheke. Fear to apply. This is for somebody. Fear to send out the application. Fear to do the interview. Shama kuturiaba. Whatever your spirits are. Rabaka satayana masheke. Leketaba. Sikanda bokoto rakaya. Shikandaba sikataya. Rebunda katana in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power that has come to put you in bondage and captivity. In the name and power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your weapons and fetters into pieces. Right now. Fear and doubt. Sickness, disease, infirmity. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Let go of her heart. Let go of her mind. Let go of her career. Let go of her skills. Let go of her gifts. Let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ of Nazareth look at me spirit of bondage let her go now let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth she's a child of the king she's a child of the king so every spirit of weariness go now right now right now right now fear go doubt go I break off every word they've spoken over you thinking that they know you every negative word every word of limitation every utterance that has come to captivate you I nullify their power from over your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah I command that your heart will be healed from brokenness too Heal her heart, Lord. Heal her broken heart. In the name of Jesus. We remove every word that has been like a dagger in her heart. I command the wounds in your heart to be healed. Yes. Wounds created by your own family members. Wounds created by your peers. Hallelujah. Be healed. In your heart be healed someone hold this mic for me thank you what's happening with your eyes huh okay okay I want to pray for your mind father heal her mind lift your hands heal her mind renew her mind even now in the name of Jesus, breathe upon her, Lord. Breathe by your Holy Spirit. Breathe. Shikuriaba. Breathe. 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 
breathe, Jehovah. Breathe. Just breathe. Breathe, Lord. Heal her. And breathe afresh upon her, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Fear. Spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, spirit of fear. I call you out now. Manifest yourself. Right now. Fear. Fear. In the name of Jesus, I call you out now. I also call out the spirit of abuse. Fear. There's fear there too. Right there. Fear. In the name of Jesus. Loose her now. Can you come? Can you come? You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Raise your hands. In the name of Jesus, every power of fear that is attacking your life and your mind, begin to release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power that has come to set you back, spirit of setback, release her now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Delays, loose her now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Low self-esteem. You know what else is there? Look at me. Spirit of rejection. Let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command healing into your heart and your soul. Father, make her spirit well right now and revive her. Revive. Revive. And heal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release power of healing into the areas where you've been hurt most, rejected most, abandoned most, abused most. Hallelujah! Father, heal her now, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, allow everything that has infiltrated this temple that is unclean to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now, I call out every spirit of sickness in this room, every sickness. Raise your hands. I call out STDs in this room. STDs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. STDs, issues with the organs, issues with the blood. Right now, I release healing into the one who believes. Sickness, go now. Go now. Sickness, go now. In the name of Jesus. Unclean spirit in the form of diabetes, go now. High cholesterol, go now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Unclean spirit. In the form of abuse, go now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.
let me come down. Thank you. Look at me. Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break you free from every power of poverty in your family and in your bloodline. Everything that has contaminated your bloodline that wants to infiltrate you spiritually and that wants to determine your destiny. We reverse you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Generational curses, generational difficulties, generational barriers, generational makuta mountains and hills right now in the name of Jesus we level you before this woman in the name of Jesus I command there needs to be a cleansing of your bloodline and I want you to receive not just for yourself begin to see your siblings see your family and receive of healing and cleansing on their behalf right now right now father cleanse this bloodline cleanse this bloodline father purify them look at me I speak into your grandmother's womb spiritually and I speak to the place where contamination came look at me by the power of the Holy Ghost I go in that womb and I blow out now the contamination and I command that it leaves you and especially the females in your family spiritually by the reverse order right now. Come out now. Come out now. Loose right now. Come out in the bloodline. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Loose the women of this family. We loose their marriages. We loose their finances. We loose their careers. We loose their joy. We loose their peace. Shabbat. Yukurabaha. In the name of Jesus. Worthy, worthy is. Do you know me, sir? You don't know me. You deserve worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve worthy. your heads your hands on your head there's someone in this room who's having a mental attack there's a war going on in the mind there's a battle going on inside your head hallelujah and if you know someone who is undergoing this issue at home please stand in the gap for that person there's something going on in your mind your son how old is he 23 so you're here to stand in the gap for him where in Jamaica is he he's in Kingston was he a student 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was doing that while he was up here. Okay, raise your hands. So you believe that the Lord God can hear your cries and deliver your son? Okay, let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. You tell Jesus, you cry out to him and tell him what you want. And I'll stand here and agree with you. You tell him. Tell him. Don't tell me. Tell Jesus. And I'm going to tell him too. With you. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. I don't know what's going on in his life right now. Talk to Jesus. Just talk to him. It's okay. Tell Jesus. Yes. 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 I break every power of mental bondage from over your son. I tread upon it now in the name of Jesus. I break every power of bondage, wickedness, and evil. And whatever has infiltrated his mind by virtue of any sin he has committed. Father, this morning we ask that all sins be blotted out from before you where his son is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father you said you are bound in mercy you are loving you are kind you are patient you are long-suffering long-suffering God have mercy upon this man's son blot out his transgressions pardon his iniquities Jehovah father remove from him every stigma that comes with mental illness remove the stereotype remove the stress the heaviness that comes the cloud that comes Lord God the sorrow that comes with it deliver the son right now let mental issues flee let them depart from him now We're Wherever he is in Jamaica, we pronounce healing over him. We announce his wholeness right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say, beat unto your son according to your faith. Look at me. You don't need to repeat. All you got to do is hear me and believe. Be it unto you according to your faith for your son. I release healing over him. Healing. Healing in the name and power of Jesus. You might not know where he is at this minute, but Jesus knows. And we are sending up prayers on his behalf. Sister Tanisha, where are you? Come here, Sister Tanisha. So, can you tell him what the Lord did for you? Because you weren't here last week. You want to tell him quickly? Okay, quick. I didn't know that they were praying for me. And when I was home, I felt something came over me. And then my sister called me and said, Tanisha, you know that we prayed for you. And I said, I know that something went down because I felt so different. I had high blood pressure and they were praying for me and then even tell me that they were praying for me. And I felt it at all. And right now I'm a brand new person. My eyes had blood shots in it. And now look at my eyes. There's no blood in it. But thank you, Jesus. Go for the picture, for the picture quick. So she would have been here every Sunday except last Sunday. In fact, it was the Sunday prior when she said she was on her way home when she felt like she had a sudden headache. And she said that not only were her eyes hurting, but she said she started to see red gatherings of blood in her eyes. She ended up going to the doctors because the doctors said that her pressure had gone up. Now, you have you showed me this red thing. This is the one you sent me? Yeah. Okay, to, to show them. So this is her eye. It had this red thing. Which one of the eye was this? The left? The left eye. Look, it has this red bloodshot. Because the pressure, the doctor says, was extremely high. 
So because now, you know, we don't have many hands on deck in terms of altar work. She not being here was very obvious last week. And I remember we were, I mean, the team was praying for me. And we said, let's pray for Sister Tanisha. She has no clue that we're here praying for her. When I saw you send that message in the WhatsApp to say thank you for praying for me, I'm like, somebody called you and tell you, but I didn't know that you were healed at the same time. So you said while we were here praying, which we didn't tell you we were praying for you. I, I didn't know that you were praying for me. It's long after sister called me and told me, but I felt that something was different. I don't, I don't feel eye blood, I don't, my head feel light. If something just came over me and I said, something not right. And I realized that is when you guys were praying for me. So in the hour when we were here praying for her back there, the Holy Ghost was there. So let me, I say this to say, while we are here praying for your son, who is somewhere in Jamaica, we don't know, you don't know at this minute exactly where he is and what he's doing. Understand this, that your prayers have gone up. And the Lord is already giving instructions for him to be released. You might not see the effects immediately. You might not see the results you're looking for at once. But I'm telling you this. Something has broken Shanama Seke into pieces today. Begin to rejoice. Begin to believe. Halabasata. Worthy your name you know what is coming to my heart may I have my rag let me tell you what is coming to my heart quickly the Lord put this in my heart and I said this to our brother this morning some of you you have in your hands some monies, gifts that you are expecting and awaiting to hand over to your physicians and they don't if you would give that to God some of you, you owe him say it the Lord because he has saved you thousands of dollars and not even a dollar you've given to him to say thanks some of you, you have a sacrifice for the king. Not for me, but for him. But I hear the Lord saying, some of you, you have stuff for him. You have things for him. You've been robbing him, say it, the Lord. And you know it because he has been speaking to you about it. Say it, the Lord. And it shall be a curse to you. To have in your hand and possession what does not belong to you. Know this today. The Lord put this in my spirit. I didn't put it there. He put it there. Hallelujah. So at this moment, I wonder if there's someone who has a surgery pending. That has something that needs to be given to the Lord. And not the surgeons. Huh? I wonder. Let us take out our gifts at this moment. I don't know. He put this in my spirit now. I wonder if this is for someone who's watching online. You have something that you're expecting to give to the surgeon, but I wonder if it belongs to God. Because maybe with all his experience and expertise, he cannot do it like Jesus. And not that you're paying Jesus for healing because he doesn't charge for such. But you know deep down that you owe him. You owe him. You owe him. We'll have the information up for you, those of you who are watching online. Hallelujah. I want you all to put some of you who have some special requests. 
I'm going to ask you to do me a favor today. I want you to not just put what you're giving God in those envelopes, but I want you to, if you have a pen or pencil, to write your special request on those envelopes. I'm going to do something this morning. We're going to put them in one basket, and I'm going to do something this morning. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, my sister. The Bible says, deep calleth unto deep. Do you know why you're here? Listen to my words very carefully. I said, deep calleth unto deep. Deep calleth unto deep deep calleth unto deep depth knows itself depth is always searching for itself death has a magnetic force that makes it want to be connected with itself you know why you're here did you bring yourself here this morning do you know why you're here? How did you get here? Did you think you came here of your own? Let me tell you something in case you did not know. The Lord Jesus sent you here this morning. Ma me koprede ketaba sana kuriaba shekalaba ikarianda kate. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth son of the living God I pray that the depth in you will begin to let out those things that are stored up for this time and this season and this moment in your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I pray that everything bottled up in here Right now, your wells, wells of living water, wells and streams of worship, your gifts right now, be awakened in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Everything that they have deposited that were, were never true, those things that were said, that were never true, hallelujah, never true, never a reflection of what God has designed according to his original plan in eternity in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth even those gaps that are inside even those areas that are seemingly vacant inside that you might want others to feel now let the power of the Holy Ghost begin to move upon those areas of void right now let there be an infilling in the name of Jesus let power come upon this woman right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now we remove from you in the spirit everything that is covering and hiding your true identity covering up your true beauty covering up your true personality right now in the name of Jesus the power of darkness the power of camouflage the power of being second best be broken from over this talented woman in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth watch this not only are you talented but I hear the Lord say you are anointed there are some things that you are extremely good at doing you have been anointed watch this it's not man that anointed you it's not your family name that has anointed you and nobody's jealousy can take that anointing from you I pray that you'll be perfect 
rooted in those things to which God has called you. I pray you'll be sharpened in those areas. Ah, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will accelerate in glory, accelerate in your gifts, accelerate in your manifestation in this time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you sing? What do you do? You pray. But you can't sing. It's amazing how you still worship. Do you dance? You can't dance. You can't sing. You can't dance. But you are a worshiper. How? How do you worship? So watch this. Since you've been praying a lot and have not been using dancing nor singing, and sure enough, maybe you're not going to be the best at those things, but from one worshiper to the next, I release depth in your worship right now. Amen. Depth in the name of Jesus. So that when you go into the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, the glory will come upon you so that when you go in the presence of the Lord, you'll feel the angels surrounding you. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you'll begin to see. Watch this. Spiritually, I want to remove some things from your eyes. But also naturally, I hear the Lord saying, be very careful of what you put over your eyes. Okay? No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to unless he tells you. Okay? Oh my God, hold on. Well, I wear glasses, but each time I remove my glasses to apply false lashes, after a period of time, my eyes start to hurt. Wow. It wasn't me, it was the Holy Ghost. So watch this. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. Watch this. This thing. So first of all, the lashes, they themselves cause a shadow. But watch this. I shadow. I wonder why this has been called I shadow. Could it be creating a shadow over our eyes spiritually? In the name of Jesus, every shadow be moved from over your eyes spiritually. Begin to see. And I also pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will be injected into your eyes as medicine right now. I command it to do and perform what your eyeglasses cannot and will never be able to do in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let it be, Father. Since last week, and I have never read Psalms 20 before, but I was at work and I was attending to a patient, and for some strange reason, I started to sing some trust in chariots and horses but I trust in the Lord and I went on the internet and I found the song and I remember I fell to my knees and I sang and I was praying in the room and my patient, she had a cough. And when I went back to feed her about three o'clock, the cough was gone. Wow. So while she was worshiping, your patient was receiving healing. She did. She, the cough was gone, gone, gone completely. Did I not tell you that you are a worshiper? And now your worship has taken on a new dimension. Hallelujah. Watch and see what the Lord will do as you worship. When it comes on to worshiping, it's not melody that counts. There are many of them who are <laughs> and there's not one speck of anointing to deliver anybody or to bring any presence of the Lord in. A fancy voice 
but they're still not impressive before God. So utilize what you have been given to the honor and glory of the Father and watch and see what God does when you sincerely worship him. Hallelujah. Raise your hands with your envelopes. As a matter of fact, let us put them in the baskets. I want to pray over these. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pending surgery. Okay, let me have some more. Sister Keisha. Who brought, who brought you? You came by yourself? Did you come with someone? Who, okay. Oh, that's your wife? Oh, come. What's going on with him? Congested heart failure. And he was in the hospital in May for a month. And then he came out and he's on dialysis. Congested heart failure? What is that? He have some heart rhythm problem. Heart, heart racing problem. High blood pressure. High blood pressure. But what triggered that? Something triggered it. What triggered it? Do you remember? I mean, you know, partially bad eating choices, but I think it's beyond that. I do think so too. I hear the Lord saying that there have been some anxieties. Is that true? Can you give me one of the main things that have made you anxious? I'm very concerned for my wife, uh, her health, health issues. So you too have health issues. So it's you first, then your husband started to become anxious and then he started to develop issues of his own, is that so? You first started to have issues, is that so? What are your issues? Where are the clots? In your leg. Okay. So in the same order in which affliction has come into your house, I'm going to be praying. So I'm going to pray for you, then I'm going to pray for your husband. Is that okay? Can you hold hands? Is that okay? There's nothing like when two people come together in agreement before God in prayer. Do you guys agree that the Lord is more than able to take this infirmity away from you and your house? Is that fine? Let us pray. Stretch your hands toward them. Let it be that by the time I'm done, we have the stuff here, so I may pray over them. Father, in the mighty, precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind every spirit of infirmity that is over this family. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I subdue every power of sickness that has come upon this woman and also upon her husband. Right now, I command that every unclean spirit from the Department of Infirmity, I command you to vacate their lives their marriage, their bodies right now. Every power responsible for the clotting of the blood, every power responsible for indigestion issues, every power responsible for heart conditions, failures in the heart, I subdue you now in the name of Jesus. As they have come to you, Father, for healing, I pray that not only will you blot out their transgressions and pardon their iniquities, not only do I ask that you heal them in their bodies, but I ask that everything they have lost 
as a result of having to deal with their infirmities will be restored unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let monies they have lost be returned. Let any bond and bonding time they have lost be returned. Let every joy they have lost be returned in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak right now into your blood, both of you. I command a breaking down now of clots wherever they are found. Clots of blood, hear ye the Lord, you must disintegrate now. I speak to your heart, husband, and I say unto the organ of the heart, hear ye the word of the Lord. Be thou healed right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I administer healing into your bodies right now. From the crown of your heads, Unto the soles of your feet. I command a reversal now of every demonic activity and pattern that is existent in your body. I release healing. Healing right now in the heart. In the blood. Healing in the mind. Healing in the rest of the soul. Healing. Look at me, sir. I release healing. Healing. In the name of Jesus, be thou clean. Right now. Right now. I'm not begging for the sickness to hear me. I'm commanding it to be healed. Right now. In the name of Jesus, both of you. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and begin to celebrate Jesus. Stretch your hands. Father. You saw, I want to I wanna also speak to those individuals who have by faith released from home as well. So I'm going to pretend that those requests you are writing on the screen are in here. So I might not be able to read those requests. I might not be able to do that for you on TikTok because I'm not looking in the comments now. But I'm acknowledging them because I know that you are there and that you are writing. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, I know you're doing the same. So these prayers I'm praying are inclusive of yours. Okay? Understand. Stretch your hands. Father, as your people were writing, let me hear that sound still, Grant. You saw what they were typing in the comments and you also saw what those in the sanctuary were writing with their pens and pencils is there anything too hard for you to do you don't delight in this you don't need this your servants do <laughs> to do your work but you God, you, you don't need this <laughs> for a cattle upon a, a thousand hills belongs to you your people have needs some have by faith said I'm going to give you what I would have otherwise given to the physicians 
they gave by faith. Instead of building the physician's empire and their brand, they've decided to build your kingdom instead. By faith, there has been a swap. I'm going to deposit this into you rather than give it to some uncircumcised Philistines. Shall you not honor these, Jehovah? Shall you not reward them because of their faith? Shall you not reward them, Lord? According to the willingness of their hearts. Behold, Lord, I bless these even the ones that I can't touch. I present them to you, my Father. And I say unto you, Lord, acknowledge every request and answer them according to your will. Let no person who in this hour is typing a request and has written a request not be answered by you. Let every man receive a response according to your divine purpose and will. I should in command that the response occurs in a timely manner. Many have been saying it feels like you're not hearing. They've been praying but you're not answering. Today, I should even stand in the gap on behalf of these. And I say, Lord, let their petitions come up before you like a sweet incense this morning. Let it come up with the stamp of urgency. I put a praise upon these petitions. Hallelujah! Shire Queen, you're holy. You are worthy. There is none like you and there will never ever be. You are our one and only true and living God. We don't bring our matters to flesh. We bring them to you. Now, Lord, hear your people's hearts. And although they're not worthy, because none of us is, grant them their requests according to your will. In Jesus' mighty precious name. Let me see those of you in this room who want to say yes to Jesus Christ. Can you come quickly? Quickly. I want to pray for you quickly. Just run to the front. Christ from the inside stand here from the inside of me may you Never accepted Jesus? She has. Oh, but you brought her to the front. So, huh? So this moment is for people who want to say yes to Jesus. Raise your hands. You've never accepted him, but you want to receive him. 
Raise your hands. Let me see you. Let me see those of you who are saying yes to Christ. You've never said yes. Raise your hands. So everybody else, hands down. Those of you who are saying yes, hands up. One, two, three. Have you already? Is, hi. Have you received Jesus into your heart? Who is with this person? Has she received Jesus in her heart? Okay. You are just receiving Jesus. Great. Anybody else? You? You've already received Jesus? Okay. So, raise your hands. Say after me, Father. And those of you who are online, Father, I surrender all to you today. My life, my will, my desires, my family, my career, my finances, my spirit, my soul. I surrender all, all to you. I confess that Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is Lord, Master, and Savior. He is my Redeemer. He is the way, the truth, the life. I shall not go to the Father except I go through him. Father, I receive Christ into my heart and life today. Save me. Not because of my good works, but save me according to your love and your grace. I am saved. I am forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is, what is the issue with this person? Trinidad. Oh my God, you flew to America? Wow. Yeah, I just follow you online, Facebook. And when I heard you find a place to keep service, I heard you find a place to keep service. I came by my daughter. Yes. I came by my daughter. Yes. And I told her, yeah, she had to bring me to service. Yes, you flew with your mom? Up here. Oh, so you were always up here. Your mom came, she took a flight in her state to be healed. Searching for the place, we couldn't find it. She, she was driving all over. So you came this far yes, because you, you know the to, to, Lord can heal you. Yes, true. You. Woman, you will be healed because of your faith. I said, woman, you will be healed. Raise your hands. You don't even have to tell me what your issues are. Raise your hands. Can someone stand behind her? Jesus. All I want is name of Jesus I command every power of infirmity that is attacking your body every power that is persistent in the area of causing you 
to be in bondage and to be weak in your body sick in your body spending 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 at the doctors trying to tell you that oh you are of age so it's okay no it's not okay because you can go home without having any sickness in your body I break every power of sickness from over you in the name of Jesus look at me everything that is not aligned everything that is being suppressed Everything that has deflated. Everything going on in here. Rabba Sata. I release power in you now. Power. Power. Loose her now in the name of Jesus. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command everything. That is flourishing in this body which is the temple of the Lord. That is not of Christ. That has come with the intent to steal, kill and destroy. To dry up right now. Dry right up. Dry up Shaka. Dry up in the root right now. I speak death into the root of this sickness right now. In the name of Jesus, I kill everything trying to kill you. Sheki siki taka sukuriyama kuriyamo shaya. Loose her now. Loose her now. Loose her now. Loose her now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Loose her now. Let her go now. Let her go right now. Loose her now. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of death, release her now. Release her now. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. I release life over you right now. Life. 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 In the name of Jesus. All over your body, life. In your blood, in your heart, life right now. In the name of Jesus, recover. I command that you recover all right now. In the name of Jesus, in your health. Recover all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Weakness begin to go. We tread upon you. We subdue you in the name of Jesus. Every inconsistency that's happening in your body and that are showing up in your test results. Now we speak healing into you in the name of Jesus. And even your mind. Look at me. I speak healing into your mind and also into your heart. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. You think he has forgotten you, but he has not. Hallelujah. He loves you. And he has forgiven you a long time ago. And the Lord wants to bless your children. Hallelujah. If only they would walk in obedience, total obedience to him. You yourself would be surprised to see what become of them. Father, I thank you for renewing her years and giving her strength like an eagle. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are making many things new in her midst. I want you to stretch, just stretch. Has she been feeling pains? Where's her daughter? Where's she? Has she been feeling any pain? Where? 
in her feet, okay? Mm? In your knees and your hip, okay? How are the knees feeling right now? Hmm? Slight? Stiff, stiff, or stiff. Stiff. Stiff, but it's like a feeling. Slack. What about your, your hip? Yeah, my hip. I'm um, so feeling okay. It means, okay, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Right now. Look at me. I release power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth into your knees and into your hip. Because see, I can't heal you. There's only one who does. And in the name of he who heals, I command healing now to infiltrate your knees and your hips right now. Right now. I command pain to go. Whatever is tied around them in the spirit, let her go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command her legs to be loosed, her hips to be loosed. In the name of Jesus. Shama kuturiba. Sana kuturiyama. Her back, her back. Tell me about her back. She leans. What's that called? Um, scoliosis. Scoliosis. We're praying about that too. Would you like us to pray for your back? Father, stretch your hands toward her. I'm just going to feel your back. Is that okay? That's all I'm doing. So there is a bulge on the right side of her back. And usually when people have been diagnosed with the condition of scoliosis, because there is usually a leaning toward a particular side, it usually causes a strain on that side on which most things are leaned. So there is a leaning going on here. If we have faith, he can heal her, you know. Hello? But you cannot doubt. Are you hearing me? You cannot doubt. Father, let there be healing in her back. In the name of Jesus. Are you raising up your back? Huh? Because I feel your back raising up. Are you doing it? No? Father, Straighten. Straighten her bones. Straighten. Correct. Correct. Correct her bones. Are you moving your back? Can you sit here? Can you sit there, please? Right here. Position these bones according to your original design. Command right now, Father, that bones will return to their rightful position. Father, 
I believe that this ailment is for your glory. Now, Father, correct this issue of scoliosis. Father, reverse this bulge. Reverse this excess curve. This curvature of the bones, Father, let it be corrected right now. In the name of Jesus, straighten those things that are bent. In the name of Jesus, Father, straighten those bones. I want you to be praying as your hands are stretched. Strengthen. Oh, she's falling, she's falling. She's falling. Can we put her on the floor quickly? Brother Andre, Brother Andre, where is he? Is he here? Can you help to put her on the ground quickly? Help to lift her and put her on the ground. Come on, stretch your hands. We need prayers. Prayers of healing. For we serve a miracle working God. Jesus! 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 Son of the living God! Come on, somebody petition him on her behalf. Jesus! Jesus, Jesus, Yekosebe. Jesus, Ooh. all we want. Open up those things that are cringed. Family, I want to tell you something. I feel like someone is sprinkling water on me. Like, I feel sprinkles. Is someone? Let me see. I feel like somebody is sprinkling fine droplets of water. Fine droplets of water like the dew or something in my back I feel it father yes Lord Let the unclean spirit of scoliosis go as well, Father. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, I feel his presence right here. Jesus. 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 Mm. Mm. I hear the Lord Jesus saying, Shadin, I am walking in the rose right now. He says, I'm walking in the room. He says, I'm walking in the room. He said, Shadin, I'm walking in the room. He says, Shadin, I'm walking in the room. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Father, there is nothing too hard for you to do. Jesus, Jesus. 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 I said, he said, I am walking in the room. Jesus. My sister. My sister. What's her name? Zena. Zena? Zena. Zena. Zena, can you hear me? What are you experiencing? Huh? Yeah, what are you experiencing? I just feel I was so feeling a big lump. I couldn't lie down so on the side. That the lump. There was a yeah, I used to feel the bone uh -huh. on the side. Uh -huh. And I'm not just a release. So you said you could lie on that side? I used to feel a bed, but I'm. Let us see you lie on that side. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay. You couldn't lie on it at all? You couldn't turn on it? Feel the bump. It's smaller. Where is the bump? It's so beyond the sun. Jesus. 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 I'm releasing power for it to go totally. Power through Jesus. Through Jesus, let the same mercy you showed that woman to whom you said, woman thou art loosed, be shown unto Zena. Jesus. Every power, that associates with scoliosis. You must go now. You must go. You must lose her now. Lose her now. In the name of Jesus, come out of her now. Whatever entered her mother's womb that is responsible for you, come out now. Rabba Shanama Kutoria. Right now. In the name of Jesus. We cut you. In the root right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come to you because we know you can. We don't serve a boring God, a limited God. Because <laughs> if, if there are things you can't do, then <laughs> what's the sense? What's the sense? 
If your God can only do some things, then what's the point? Huh? What's the point? If he's limited to only doing things that concern the eye, can, he can't do footing, can't do anything else. What's the point? That's not the God we serve. We serve a God who just imagines it and it comes to pass. He just commands it. He speaks it. And it happens. Can you turn on the side again? My God. My God. Tell me about your knees. Any pain? And what about the hip? Knees and hips. The stiffness is gone. You couldn't do that. Let me see you move them some more. What about the hips? You wouldn't know. Can, can we raise you up so you can take um, chest, rather check the hips? Okay, can you help to raise her up, uh, my brother? Can you check the hips? Lord was doing something. She's a little bit weak, as you can see. All I want is for, but strength will come back. You to be glorified. You to be lifted high. All I want is for you. You to be. What about the hands? Could you raise them? Can you raise them? sure okay do something you were not able to do for you to be lifted high all I want let her let, let her release her. she came with a walking stick just so you know where's her stick may I have it you to be lifted high do you need this to walk it's for you How is he feeling? I'm just a little dizzy, but my body feeling quite okay. Wow. Praise be to God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. She says she feels a little bit dizzy. So you're going to put her to sit right there. In fact, can we offer you some water, Gatorade, something? What would you like? Some Gatorade. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> Can we get our song? Hallelujah. Raise your hands. And let me speak this word over you, Zeno. I'm hearing something. I have a word, but I'm getting another word. You know what I'm hearing? I hear the Lord saying I should call you a new name. You know what I'm going to call you? I'm going to call you Naomi. Naomi. 
the Lord said, I should address you in a new name, Naomi. Naomi, look at me. I decree. And I declare right now that he that hath begun a good work in you shall complete it when you're on your way home, when you get home, when you're on that flight, when you get back to Trinidad, in the name of Jesus. This work that has begun in this room shall be completed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for healing into the mind and body of this lady in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing she wasn't always like this. The Lord says she was not always like this. What's going on? Tell me what happened. Well, about six years now, she falls sick. Just six years, same thing. She was not always like this. She was a young girl going to work every day. I am from Grenada. I am not living up here, but she she live up here. And six years now, she falls sick going to work. She work nursing aid. She falls sick. She go all Sloan catering because we come. I come out quite in Brooklyn now. We talk. When I saw you, I follow you. I just follow you on WhatsApp, and I saw you, and I say, I come up for a holiday. <laughs> Because she's six, six years now. When she make her baby, her baby was some months when she fell sick. So where's the baby now? The baby's home. She has six years. Yes. After she make her, yes. She does go to school a girl. And well, she fell sick. We bring her. They say something in her head. Something in her head. They say something in her brain. And from six years now to this, she couldn't. Well, she did last already. They say she did gone already. The hook up a set of men, I leave Grenada and I come up and I see her. Set a machine on her in Sloan Catering. When she's six, she was 26. So now she's six years now. 26. Was 36. Was 36. Okay. Yes, yeah, so six years now she's sick. Okay, what's her name? Keisha. Oh, wow. Okay. Keisha and I come up. Hallelujah. Yes. She go all about all hospital in Brooklyn, all Metalist Hospital. Would you like to pray for her? Keisha? So I'm going to have Keisha pray for Keisha first. Stretch your hands toward her right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray in your seats. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. Hallelujah. This is witchcraft. Grenadian witchcraft. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's the sickness that made her put on all this weight. And that helped to swell her up. Okay. 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 All right. Look at me, Keisha. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, somebody do the math for me. If it has been six years since she's been ill, which year did the sickness come? Quickly. Huh? 2017? All right. A mathematician. They're on the camera. In 2017. <laughs> Watch this. I need a piece of... Um, a piece of gum is in my mouth. Thanks. Watch this. 
I command the power of the Holy Ghost to visit the day of the month of the year in which this affliction came upon you. I speak into it through the power of the highest, El Elyon, the all-knowing, omnipotent, omniscient God. The God who was and is and is to come. The God who is the beginning and the end. On the day, at the time, at the moment when this came, I speak to you now. And I command a reversal, a reversal right now of whatever transpired on that day. I reverse you. I cancel you now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to you. At the root, whatever is there, wherever this unclean spirit that has come to bring to her life unsoundness of mind, whatever you have come with, and wherever you were invited and initiated, I command the blood of Jesus to desecrate that place right now. Father, we must ask the Lord to forgive her because there are some stuff that kind of were like open doors to this thing. Begin to intercede on her behalf, please. Begin to ask the Lord to have mercy on her and forgive her. Yes. Yes, it's okay. That's it. It's true repentance. The Lord says that's what he needs. A broken and a contrite spirit. You see? At least you know. Hallelujah! That's all. That's fine. Yes, Father. Forgive her. And have mercy on her. And as you forgive her, break the bands of wickedness, Father. Break it. Break it. Look at me. I hear the Lord saying, look at me. Thy sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And if he's faithful to forgive you of your sins, he's faithful to also cleanse you of your unrighteousness. command a purifying work to begin now in your body in the name of Jesus I command everything that has come from any work of the occult anything that has come from a witch's table a wizard's altar I command that you be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you know what else I command to be uprooted? Every condition that has been formed in your body by virtue of you taking these medications. I command every poison that is in you to be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask someone to, um, brother... Andre, I'm going to ask you and someone else to just kind of help raise her up a little bit out of the chair. Is that okay? Can we raise her a little bit? That's fine. I just want her to be up. Is that fine? Oh, well, she's even trying to get up anyway, right? I love that. Put your hands together. She's even trying. Just help to raise her up for me. Oh, wait. She tells him, wait. Well, okay. Look at this. Watch her. She's trying. She's trying to get up. Hold on. Wait, wait. Make see. Wait. No, make we see how far she can go. She has, she has said, wait. All right. Try again. Try again. At least she's trying. So behind her. Yes. At least she's trying. At least she's trying. Put your hands together. At least she's trying. Okay. I want you to help to straighten her a little bit. Yes, 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now I want someone to hold my microphone. Uh, someone whose hands are free. Oh, hi, Sister Joy, you were here. <laughs> I surrender. Do you surrender all to him? To you. She holds on to my hand. Everything. Where's my shawl? Can I get it? I had it on. To you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I destroy every power of witchcraft that is assigned to Keisha right now. I destroy the root of it in the name of Jesus from whence it started and from whence it came right now. The fire of the living God be kindled upon you. The fire and wrath of God be spilled against you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we present the blood of Jesus Christ at the place of inception of this sickness. Wherever the genesis of this sickness is, we send forth the word of God into you right now. For Jesus Christ was wounded for Keisha's transgressions and bruised for her iniquities. The chastisement of her peace was upon Christ and with his stripes she is healed. Let the word of God infiltrate and dominate the genesis. Of this witchcraft plot. Hallelujah. So whatever they said. Those things need to come out. Whatever. That was sent. Whatever entered. We command. That you go in the reverse order. Whatever has come into her legs. To paralyze her. You have to go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever has come into her mind. To interfere with her. Psyche. You too must go. Those things. That you're inhaling. They must come out. In the name. Of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. Whatever. Is in your back your hip, your side, the power of God illuminates you now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, every sickness in this body, we command that you be uprooted by the power of Jehovah. And by the power of the name of his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing into your bones right now. Sign news, receive of healing virtue through Christ. Muscles, receive of healing joints, receive of healing right now. Cells, receive of healing tendons, receive of healing organs receive of healing mother 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 quickly quickly you need to begin to intercede for your daughter cry out to God for her right now cry out to him yes Sharabakati Rabadoroko Suriamandoro Lokoturiaba Shaya. 
Shiburu ribi katari anderelebe kasataya. Shinduru bukuturi aba kasaya. That's your mom. That's how you see your mom wanting to be freed. And you have your hand in your pocket. It's your time to cry out to the Lord for your mom as well. Sharabaki Rahandia. Jesus. Some, your heart, your heart, Keisha, there are some things that you have heard that have affected your heart. You need to let them go. Keisha, you need to let them go. Keisha, you need to let some people go. Keisha, release them from your heart. Release them from your heart. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Father, heal her heart and forgive her and cleanse her. Cleanse her, Jesus. Come on, pray for her. Jesus, deliver her. Deliver her and forget the things she did. Forget them. Blot them out, Lord. Remove every record of her wrongs, Father. Keisha. Keisha. There are some things in your heart. You must begin to repent for those things right now. You need to talk to God. If you don't let them go, you will not be healed. Let them go. You must repent. Come on, speak to the Lord. Ask him to have mercy on you. And you must let people go who have hurt you and who have spoken all manner of things about you. And you're disappointed in some people too who have forsaken you. You must let those things go as well. Because except you forgive, you cannot be forgiven, Keisha. The whole auditorium could pray for you, but if you don't forgive, then you can't be forgiven so you can be healed. In the name of Jesus, give her the capacity and the unction to release these things from her body and her heart. In the name of Jesus, every unclean power Attacking your health. Let her go now. Let her go now. Right now. Right now. Loose her now. In the name of Jesus. For he came to set the captive free. Let her go now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We release the fire of God around her to create an atmosphere of deliverance on her behalf. We also release the word, the spoken word right now, all over her, all over her mind, all over her spirit right now. 
Let there be light around Keisha right now. Let there be light. Light right now. Light. 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 Light in the name of Jesus. Let there be light. Right now. Everything that has come through witchcraft. The Lord Jesus rebukes you even now. Everything that has come through generational wickedness. Father, forgive them and cleanse her of these things that have inhabited her body because of those activities. Cleanse her, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Spirit of the living God. Except you do it, it cannot be done. Father, visit the bloodline. See where things were said and where things were done. Father, out of your mercy, forgive the family even now. In the name of Jesus, forgive the mother, forgive the daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O oh Lord, let their hearts be healed of pain. Let their hearts be healed of the wound caused by people's words and their slander, their defamation. Hallelujah. Father, let strength come back to her body. And let healing come to her bones and organs. Can you hear me, Keisha? Can you talk? Can you talk? Huh? She has not been able to talk. She couldn't speak at all. It's coming back. Yes. 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 Look, look, look. You unclean spirit, look. In the name of Jesus, you need to let her go. She does not belong to you. Every spirit that has come to infiltrate her mind, you must let her go. Can you allow her to sit? Every power that has come, every argument, stretch your hands as we, we speak to arguments. Every argument that is trying to bring up a point and to convince God that she doesn't deserve to be healed. We shut you down right now. We counter you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that every poison that has entered your head while at the facility. Was this here in America? Okay. We pray that every residue of those poisons be dried up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that everything that has entered your belly. That those things will depart from you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that everything that has come upon you. To take you over that those things will let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we don't know where the open door is. We don't even know if the door is still open right now as we pray. But one thing we're asking is that you will hear us according to your will for it is your will for her to be set free. Do this one thing for us, Father, and command Satan, 
who is arguing before you, command that he release her. Command God that the charges that are so evident and obvious against her in the spirit, command that the charges be dropped. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, delete every record of wrong. Keisha has been stiff-necked over the years. She's walked in disobedience, just like many of us. She's not the only one. Oh, yeah? She did baptize when? She has walked in disobedience. And sometimes we got to understand that disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Are you understanding me? You understand me, Keisha? Will you? Serve the Lord with all your heart going forward. Because you can't walk in disobedience anymore. Do you see what has happened? Do you want to be freed? So the first thing that the Lord requires is that your heart be turned. Can you hear me? I don't know how your deliverance is going to occur. Because everybody's deliverance is different. Some people's own happens in stages. For some, it happens miraculously and instantly. Um, Keisha, I don't know what the Lord wants to do with you, but here's what I'm hearing. That you've walked in disobedience, and the only way for you to be victorious is if you totally submit and totally obey to obey is better than sacrifice the Lord has reserved your right mind you see how you can answer now watch this the Lord is going to be stripping you of those things that are heavying you down in the spirit watch this watch this and as your heart is turned before him, he look upon your heart and he will reward you according to your heart. Prayers have gone up for you, but we can do so much and no more. If your heart is in the right place, Keisha, I tell you this, your deliverance has started. And he will complete it. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Make sure you let go all the people who have hurt you. Even when you were sick and they felt like you didn't hear them. It's okay. It's okay. You got to let them go. As a deliverance minister, one of the things I've observed is that many people, they don't get their deliverance when they have unforgiveness in their hearts you gotta let them go even your mom has said some things too over the years you gotta let those things go you gotta let them go you gotta let them go so you can be healed all right and as your heart becomes purified there is no doubt the rest of your body will in Jesus name raise your hands let me release you father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I cover every vehicle that belongs to those who are here I cover their transportation back home and back to work under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I thank you for every life that has been impacted. Thank you for the grace you've given to your people to be here in spite of the cold temperatures outside. I pray that because they came here nonetheless, that you will bless every person that walked into this room today. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I pronounce a special blessing upon you. Receive it for this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have to tell God thanks for what he did. After three, we're going to say, to God be the glory, great things he has done. One, two, three. To God be the glory, great things he has done. One, two, three. You said those two times to me. Now this time, tell him. To you be all the glory, great things you have done. After three, one, two, three. To you be all the glory, great things you have done. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Have a wonderful rest of the day. See you next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Right here in the Marilog Hall at St. John's University. 8000 Utopia Parkway, Queens, New York. Uh, those of you who want your sweaters, they're at the back and your shirts so that you won't be cold going home. Hallelujah.